All right, let's see here. Let me set it up. There you go. There you go. Okay. All right, let me make sure everything's cool. Okay. Okay, yeah, I see us. Let me make sure the sound's good. Let's see. Yeah, it's good. All right, let's see now. We got four people in the house. They're filling up. Uh, Laurie, Laura McGraw, Susan Otteson, Phaedra Neely, Margaret Hello. Woodward. Hello. Francine Rodriguez, Amy Sunshine, Ryan, Ryan Aguilar, my homeboy, is in the house. <clears throat> Margaret Woodward. All right. There you go. Play that drum a little bit. Let them fill up. Tony Woods. There we go. All right. I got to take my shoes off. Take your shoes off. Ah. Lavia Devi's in the house. Laurel Gale's in the house. Everyone's looking forward to the show. Hello, Three Feathers and Todd, with and everyone looking forward to the show. Mm. Yeah. All right. There you go. Cricket Holden. Fran Wallace. Alima Adrazi. Welcome, everybody. Got 20 people and counting. I would be like the last one. It just keeps going up and up and up. <laughs> well, Joanne. it doesn't really matter who's live. I mean, we love it when everybody's <clears throat> live, but, you know, you can view it any time. So. Oh, yeah. the uh, I watched Good. the shows, and the last one the last one just had a huge replay. Janie Vanima just woke up in the night. There's a reason for that. So let's uh, roll the show out. This is going to be an ongoing thing. Uh, Diana Beaumont, Angel Divine, welcome. Todd Medina, Soul Speak 5D, Soldier Network, Connie Chrisman, how you doing? We got three feathers back. We're going to have a continuation of our discussion. And uh, we're going to see where it goes. We got a, some subjects on uh, the table that we left on the table. Yeah, some stories that need to be heard. Yeah. Let me tell my friend, she just did a great show today. Say, hey, thank you. There's another great one right now. Okay. Just started. Okay. Here we go. Hello, Fleeper Ramson. Mary Walton Robinson. I want to wait till we get up to 25 viewers because my birthday is on the 25th in January. And I used to tell people, my birthday is January 25th. This is exactly a month after Jesus. <laughs> 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 so, so they wouldn't forget to get me something. But <laughs> I always got a second chance if I didn't get what I wanted for Christmas. My I, sister for my is, birthday. I think my sister is the, is the 20... What is this? There we go. That message you sent was to me. <laughs> What's that? The message you said, hey, everyone, three feathers. That, was, that uh, That's Oh, yeah. I got it. Nobody else got it. Oh, nobody <laughs> got it except for yeah. you. Okay. Kimberly well, everybody. Duar. Hello, everybody. Yeah. I couldn't believe how many views last time. There you go. We got 26 now. Oh, okay. I'm showing 24. That's that, all right. This will be, be delayed on here. Ah. Uh, Philippa Ransom says that's her birthday too. My sister's birthday is the day before yours. Wow. Mm -hmm. Cool. So I'm Aquarius, of course. Cool yeah. Figure. Aquarius is cool. I like Aquarius. Hello, Mary Lou and Mary Cooper. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's ground. Let's practice that grounding technique we learned last time from uh, from my teacher, Art Running Bear. Yeah. So what we're going to do is sit up straight, our spine straight, and we're going to imagine an energy swirling around our waist. And whatever is real to you, whether it's a color, water. For my first time, I actually envisioned a huge chain and an anchor. But now it's like this blue energy. 
That's what I'm saying. Did yeah? Just, yeah, that's what I was like. I got this blue. I got this blue. It looks like, it looks like one of those things you jump in the water with when you're a little kid. You know? Yeah. The floaty like thing. Like a donut? No. Yeah, but I, I saw, as soon as you said that, I saw the blue. I saw this blue, and I was like, man, I'm seeing some blue wow. like around me. Yeah, very well, cool. Well, we're Blu-ray, yeah? That's right, man. Okay, so we're imagining energy circling around our waist, and then we're just going to sink that into the ground two feet below us into the earth star chakra and then all the way down into the heart of mother earth to the center I'm going to turn my phone widescreen so you guys can see what I'm doing. I think you need to turn it. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Actually, the other way we could see better. Well, Thank no, you're you. good. Yeah, you're good. So now. you need to be able to see my hands because you don't know no, what I'm you, doing. We could see it better the other way. You good? Yeah, yeah we could see it the, better the other way. Yeah. Okay. okay. On my screen, I see you huge and me tiny. What? Yeah, it was not like last time, or it was half and half. Oh, uh oh, she just checked out on us. She'll be back. We got 39 people in the house. That's good. We need a little time to get everybody here. This is cool. She just popped out on us. For those of you who caught the last show, it was an excellent show. We're going to do this on a regular basis, and she's going to develop her own show. Something she uh, talked about and she'd wanted to be doing. Inner tube, that's right. <clears throat> yeah, we can see you a lot better that way. Really? Yeah, you can see we can see more of you. Yeah, but you can't see the rest. You mean we I'm up see, close? No, we can see your hands. You can? Like, yeah, I can see all of you. Okay, I don't know why so you, that's, I don't know why you can't see, but we can see all of you. <clears throat> Joanne okay, Kirkendall. Can you see you can see yeah. over here? Yeah, yeah, we can just I can see your left hand, not quite your right hand. You, yeah, nice. I can see both right when you did that. Weird. So if I did it landscape, you couldn't see more. That seems no. odd. But okay. Uh, well, what, what we're at the see? mercy of these this technology. Yeah, I'm at the mercy of a wobbly tripod. <laughs> and it's no, you're good. sitting on my table. You're good. I'm trying to get it straight because you don't want to look at me crooked either. Okay. Oh, yeah. So we welcome. can see all of you. We, we got welcome. you. There. The whole picture there. And okay. Thank we you. can actually. Uh, we can actually do something else too. Let me see if I can. I'm going to make you big and me little. There we go. Now we got all of you. You're still the same to me. No, I'm small on the screen though. <laughs> That's so weird. I'm in the corner of the screen while you do this. That's what everybody's seeing. Okay. I'm still seeing it from this setup. So I see you on top, me on the bottom. You're no, currently no, no. live. Hit this for comment. Kirkendall. Yes. That's right. I didn't know how to pronounce that. No, you're good. Okay. Yeah, you're good. Okay. So let's start. Let's do this grounding thing again. So we're right. gonna we're gonna sit up straight. We're gonna imagine an energy flowing around our waist, whatever is real to you. A color, water, rope. And you're gonna sink that down into the ground. Two feet below you. Into the earth star chakra. And then all the way down to the center of the earth. And from here, you imagine that your spine is a straight steel rod all the way up through your crown. You can open your crown to the cosmos and know that you're directly connected with source. Mm. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then from here, you can say, I wish to connect to my higher self. Please connect with me. And if you're sensitive, you should be able to feel a little bit of an expansion or a tingling when my eyes are closed and and I would do that, I would see kind of almost like a flash going like this, like I was expanding. It doesn't yeah. do that anymore. I'm pretty much embodied now, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have to step out now. That's what I do. I put the human on the side and step out. Sometime. Right, 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 right. Okay, welcome everyone. I want to tell you, uh, thank you so much for all the love and the comments. Um, I tried to uh, reply to those that I could and click like at least on most of them. But as I was doing it, when I post a comment, 
it would kick me back up to the bottom. And so I'd have to keep going, scrolling page up, page up, page up. And, and then more people were watching and commenting. And <laughs> so if I didn't get to you, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Ah, okay. Let's see here. What do we want to start with? Did we want to start with the butterfly connection, which involves the... Uh... Keith, Dubai. did you did you see this? I did it just for you. Let me see. Wow, man, I want that do rag, man. <laughs> Here, I'll give that's you like this one. You Todd give me that one. Butterflies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's really cool. Yeah, right on. Okay. Very cool. So, Very cool. the butterfly brings medicine of transformation, and a lot like what we're going through during our waking up is we go through kind of a, an ego death. We go through a little bit of a death, a change. And so the caterpillar goes into a chrysalis, which is kind of like the dark night of the soul in a way. And it's completely destroyed, liquefied, I believe. Yeah. Curling up in a fetal position and bawling your eyes out. <laughs> and it has no idea that it's going to become a butterfly. Yeah. So butterfly is all about transformation and flying free and pure beauty. And I know that it's very significant to some uh, tribes. I believe the Hopi is very significant, the butterfly. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So um, I'm going to tell you about my wind chime, that five-foot copper wind chime. Yeah, what is that, five foot? Well, it's funny. I was going to um, Trader Joe's one day. And I'm walking towards the door, and all of a sudden, I turn left, and I start walking towards this other store. I believe it was Tuesday morning, I think it was called. Or Home Goods. Maybe Home Goods. I'm not sure. Anyway, and I, was, I turned, and I just started walking there, and I go, why am I going here? Why am I going here? <laughs> and I open the door, and I walk in, and I'm like, why am I here? Why am I here? And somebody said hello to me, and I said, hi, do you have any outdoor carpets? because I had been looking for one before. And she said, no, we're all out, but the patio stuff is over there. So I said, okay. So I start walking through there, and, and I'm walking through these aisles, and I'm like, why am I here? Why am I here? Why am I here? And I'm just walking, and, and this man with a cart turns down the aisle, and I just immediately turned away. It was like a block, and I turned this way. And then as I was walking, there were all of these blankets, uh, throw, throw blankets hanging on hangers. And there was this beautiful teal color blanket. And I went like this to touch it. And my hand hit the bottom of this wind chime. There was a post, a store, a post in the store. And the, the blankets were here. And I went like that and hit this thing. Clang, 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 clang. I'm like, oh. And I start to try to silence it. And then I listen. And I was like, whoa. And the whole store, the whole store was like. And so then I started to play it. You know, and I took the center thing and I was starting to play it one thing at a time and listening to the sound. And I was having fun. And then after a few minutes, I was like, okay, that was fun. And I turned around and I took two steps and just stopped in my tracks and I went, that's why I'm here. Right. Right. And so I turned around, I was like, duh, right? And so I turned around and I look at it and the price, the price was my birth date. Oh, I'm going to wow. tell you what, what year I was born. Well, we'll all figure it out anyway. I don't know. Uh, and I was like, okay, well, clearly it's for me. So I bought it and uh, hung it in the... Uh, the room we have, it was uh, in this house I was renting, the one I lived in for three years that had to move, had um, an extra room. It used to be a hot tub room, but of mm -hmm. course, when I got there, they took the hot tub out before. So it's a liability for renting or some such thing. But anyway, so it was kind of an outdoor room, all windows and a sliding glass door and cedar. Cedar was lining the walls. And I wow. had this, this wind chime there. Now, the top of the wind chime, if you can imagine a strip of copper about an inch wide, yeah. rolled up 
into a butterfly. Wow. And that's what's on the top. And that's what's hanging from the bottom. And that's what I hit. And so that's what swings, right? All right. And um, so I, I'd start experimenting with it. And I took a, I grabbed a stick and I wrapped it in leather. So it had a softer touch and started playing it. And I noticed the second from the longest, God, I wish I had it right here to tell you, to show you. <laughs> it's okay. You're doing um, a good job but, describing it. We'll get it out on one, another show. Yeah, the second, uh, the second longest chime, I noticed whenever I played that one, um, if I had an, like kind of an upset stomach or, you know, whatever, my tummy didn't feel well, I would play that and my stomach would instantly feel fine. Wow. And so then I started really paying attention to the sounds and where it affected me in the body and how it affected me. And I'd have people come over and and I'd play it. I'm like, where do you feel this? Where do you feel this? You know, to see if it was the same. And uh, so that wind chime, um, I packed up and I put in the storage unit with everything else. And then on the, uh, before I went on my journey to the Hopi, after I was putting everything, you know, trading, it's like, okay, I need a drill. I need nails. I need, you know, a screwdriver. I need these certain tools. I need to put back the the blender and the stuff that wasn't going to make sense camping on the road, right, with the dog. And um, somehow there ended up being just the right amount of room and just enough the space on the back where I lift the hatch up to put that wind chime and in the very last moment before I left. And I'm literally getting ready to leave town. So I already thought I was packed up. I was just going to get a couple things from the storage unit. And, um, and it fit right there. And I'm like, God, I just, I really love this thing. I don't know why I'm bringing it, but I'm bringing it. And I did. And I didn't bring that out of the box. I didn't unpack it for several months because it's hard to even uh, to put back. Yeah. I I need two hands. I need somebody to hold it while we're putting it in the box properly. And so I had to create something in order to pack it up eventually. But um, it wasn't until I was in Santa Fe in the mountains. So it was summertime. And I got into Santa Fe in uh, January, right after my birthday, I believe, day after my birthday in 2016 and it was cold (laughs) and I was camping there uh, in the back of an RV park in my 13 foot portal 13 foot octagon portal tent right and it got too hot in Santa Fe and I kept trying to leave and people there say they either say it's the land of enchantment or the locals call it the land of entrapment. Because <laughs> if it doesn't want you to leave, it won't let you leave. And uh, Kaya, my Malamute, she got sick. And I had taken her to the vet there. And they had a really good program for homeless animals. They took good care of them in Arizona. I'm sorry, New Mexico. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I had been walking, you know, in the streets and saying, you know, I need, you know. People would ask me about the dog, what's wrong with her? And I said, oh, she needs to go to the vet. And they said, oh, they're really good here. They're really good. We'll take care of the dog. So I went and I made the mistake of telling them I was coming back to Seattle. I wasn't actually a New Mexico permanent resident. And so they said, well, we'll help you a little, but you're going to have to do some fundraising. So that's when I ended up, uh, I made a sign. I was staying at this house, uh, some friends, the Capanelli's, who... um, had this little casita out back and they had just such a huge, huge soft spot for Kaya, you know, and, and our situation. They're like, you can stay here in our little casita until, you know, Kaya gets all her medicines and everything worked out because she had to be tested. And it was like, you know, Mm -hmm. gosh, I want to say it was $250 just for the first test. And it was an eight hour test. And then you have to wait for results. And then, so she ended up having Cushing's disease, Mm. which, um, Basically, it makes you, it affects the pituitary or the adrenals, and it makes you, her, it made her constantly thirsty, constantly hungry, um, constantly panting, mm-hmm. um, tired, and then it affects the, mus- the muscles, so I watched her limbs literally get thin, like lose all of the muscle one by one, mm-hmm. and, um, and, her, and it affects the fur, it just completely changed the quality of her fur, and... So 
I made this sign on a cardboard and at the casita I was staying, she had paints. This was her art studio and she had paints. And so I made this beautiful new horizon, rising sun, right? And I said, homeless dog needs vet care. Woof. <laughs> you know, with the red mm-hmm. cross. And, and uh, so, of course, the sign's brightly colored, right? And I put two holes in it and I tied my scarf around it and so I could wear the sign while I'm walking the dog. And I never used to say I was homeless. I always said mobile, mobile. you know, but mobile dog needs vet care didn't make much sense. And, and I have to say, people are still very, very generous when it comes to um, our pets. And I mean, some people were handing me like $20, wow. you know, and it's like, it's wonderful, but it's also kind of heartbreaking because we don't take care of each other in that yeah, way. Yeah, right. Right. Um, but so anyhow, that got me downtown Santa Fe and um, got her some medicine, got her a little better. And I've got to tell you a magic story because here's the thing. I ended up starting a GoFundMe account for her, right? And um, I asked for prayers, love and light and healing, you know, if even if people couldn't send money. And I swear to you. So I have to say, and you'll see it in one of the videos, I just started a, a YouTube channel and have a video and you can see Kaya walks behind me and you can see her bare legs. So she had knee surgery um, a few months after I had my um, emergency <laughs> mishap surgery. Right, right. <laughs> right. She ended up blowing out her knee and that was actually her good knee. We were, I was getting ready to operate on her weak knee in two weeks, had it scheduled and she blew out the good knee. Mm poor dog. <laughs> so, um, she had, she got shaved all the, all the way from her toes to her hip and her fur grew back first on the scar and then it grew back on the skinny part of her leg, but it never grew back up here on her thigh. And none of the vets we had ever seen. And every time while I was traveling, going to different vets all the time, right. And none of them could really explain why. And her skin was pink underneath. Uh-huh. But uh, not long after it was bare and the fur wasn't growing back, it turned gray. Which she was black and white, right? So black and white and gray, it all matched. Or, you know, it blended in. Because I think it was nature's way of protecting the skin from the sun because she started to get sunburned. And so I would put coconut oil on her bare skin. Anyway, nobody could tell me what was wrong with her, why the fur wouldn't grow, bra- grow back. Until I uh, first got to Santa Fe... And the night manager in the motel when I arrived, he was a curandero spiritu. Curandero. Curandero spiritu, which is a spiritual healer. Yeah. And he had dark, dark, dark brown eyes and blue circles around his his eyes. He's a magical being too. Yeah. And so I told him, he saw the dog, you know, and I told him the story and I said, oh, the fur won't go back here. Nobody can tell me why. And he said, oh, they did a study on wolves some time ago and they discovered there's something in the saliva that makes the fur grow back. And she couldn't reach up there. Oh. And I was like, can I lick her? (laughs) (laughs) Are you a wolf? No. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. But no, but so actually what I did is I stuck my finger in her mouth a couple times, you know, was rubbing it on there, but it was like a huge patch. There's no way, and, you know, so that didn't work. But if we had other dogs around us, they would have licked her because mm-hmm. they do that. And yeah. when they have surgery or an injury, the first thing they do is they lick that wound yeah. because they're actually, it's not getting infected. They're healing it. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, uh, I mean, it can get infected, yes. It probably, you want it, yeah. But um, anyway, so it got hot in Santa Fe, and the weather was finally able to, um, or I had her medicine. I was finally able to leave, but we were staying up in uh, the Santa Fe Mountains, Black Canyon Desert, I believe is what it was called. Um, because it was about 10 or 15 degrees cooler up there mm-hmm. and I had to wait for the, her, you know, vet clearance and the meds. So, um, what was my point? Now we're talking about the dog. 
The yeah. heat. The, okay, up here at the Santa Fe Mountains. That's what is it? The wind chimes. The butterfly. The butterflies. That's right. The butterfly. So this, uh, the campground up there was was paved. It was asphalt, and it had this beautiful flagstone border, and it had a giant shepherd's hook, like to hang a lantern or to hang your towel yeah. to dry or backpack or something. And I just kind of looked at it, and I was like, "That's where the wind chime goes." And I hung it up there. And um, that particular campground was completely full of hummingbirds, so many hummingbirds. And they would come to the wind chime and they would put their beaks, the, bird, the curled copper, yeah. right? The, they would keep going into the butterfly over and over and over into the butterfly, both of them trying to find nectar, right? Wow. Because it was shiny and sparkly, so it attracted them. And... Um, so that's when I really started playing with it and really experimenting with it um, more deeply. And in the forest, it was pretty dang amazing, you know. Yeah. Um, then uh, there's a whole other story. Right, right when Kaya got her medicine, it was ready. We got clear to go. And I was like, okay, I've got to get back up to Seattle because I wanted to be up here for the whole summer. But I, we were delayed, 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 you know, divine timing and all that. And... Um, I was like, okay, this is great. I'm leaving on Monday. And the next day, the car wouldn't start. You weren't going anywhere. No, of course. And by then, I had been there 14 days in the park. They're like, you know, you got you to gotta move. Like, my car broke down, and all these campers were trying to help me. And uh, <sighs> it ended up being my fuel pump. But I, I had to run up the mountain like half a mile just to get a signal on my phone. And I would text a friend, you know, car is dead, need ice, bring dog food. And he did. <laughs> you know, so I have to keep running up the mountain every so often just to get a signal and look up fuel pump because the people discovered that's what it was. Looked at the fuel pump, how to install a fuel pump. Went to town and got a fuel pump, got a ride, came up, installed it myself. Three fuel pumps. And it still ended up uh, only taking me, when we finally did leave, I only got two hours away. <laughs> and it went, and it went. <laughs> yeah, and so, it went. So, where did the butterflies come in? So. Because I can feel it coming. Okay. When I was in Standing Rock, so for those that aren't aware what Standing Rock is, Standing Rock was, is, was the uh, North Dakota Access Pipeline in North Dakota. I believe, I think she was a youth. Jazlyn Charger was the girl that started this, mm -hmm. protesting the pipeline. And that was in April of 2015. Yeah. It did not end until February of 2016. There's a documentary on YouTube called The Standing Rock Documentary. And I'm actually in there. <laughs> the corner of my poncho, because what I was doing, and when people came, especially if they, had, if they were going to be filming, they had to have a media tag. If they had a media tag, they also had training on what you could and could not film. And who you could and could not film. And so when I was doing something like I was working with the youth on the, uh, the youth silent prayer in March, which occurred the day after treaty camp fell and 142 people were arrested. That's when the whole world. Yeah. Right. Well, first the dog attacks, they were like, what? And. So. I was there working with the youth and my job was to clear the crowd that was there supporting them. And I, and I did that. And this is a long in-depth story. I can also tell this. It's beautiful too. But, um, towards the end, towards the end of that, I just, um, I was done and I anchored, I was facing the sun and I just anchored and connected. And butterfly consciousness came in. And she was there strongly at the camp. It was a time of transformation. It was going from this brutality of what happened just the day before 
to all the elders, the grandmothers, they're praying for the water with their sacred drums, sacred feathers, sacred teepee, mowed down, arrested, taken into dog cages in the jail. In 2000, in the 2000, <sighs> civilized year, yeah. This was October 12... 2016. Yeah, October 2016. Yeah. I was headed up. I remember when that was. Here. I want to say it was October 28th, I believe. Yeah. 27th, 28th. I'm so what sure. happened with the butterfly consciousness? Now, had so you ever, butterfly had, consciousness came and I, and I just, I did this dance just was coming through me. I was feeling the energy and then we did the silent prayer in March, which was huge and transformative. And I know you want to get to the bottom of butterflies. No, so no, no. Just, I'm good. I'm listening. Go ahead. Well, it's a long story, and we got to get to we got to get to the grasshopper. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's things. So um, when we returned from the march, we were all coming back, and I was coming right back. Red Warrior Camp, and Red Warrior Camp were the Red Warriors. They were the ones on the front line. They were the ones that were handling security in the camp. They were angry, angry. Yeah. yeah. And when I came towards Red Warrior Camp, I turned towards them and immediately, it was not just butterfly, but it was, it was the divine mother. It was, it was the sacred, grandmother it was the feminine coming to balance and cool and calm and steady the warriors because there was so much anger at that time yeah you know yeah as only the mother goddess could do right and so now i'm going to skip ahead to last summer i was staying at a uh, beautiful friend's house beautiful place beautiful space and um, I had my wind chime hanging outside and again every now and then I would play it and the wind would play it I never let her get wet because I didn't want it to turn green right and um, I was just you know passing by it one day and I heard Flora my name is Flora and so the wind chime itself has a consciousness that connects to the Absolutely. butterfly consciousness. Yes. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it. But when she comes, when she's there, when she's here, <laughs> she'll show up in the body, through my body, if I allow yeah. you know. So you embody it, embody yeah. the consciousness. I, I allow it to flow. Yeah. Yeah. Her name's Flora. The, yeah, and time. actually that scene is in the documentary. So there was a couple of parts where I noticed they had dropped the camera and you could just see just a slight bit of my poncho. And my poncho <laughs> is inside. This is bright blue and white. Aqua blue, like this color blue. Yeah. I'm going to grab it in a little bit. It's blue Kachina. Cool quick. Oh, yeah, yeah. See that color blue? And I bought it at night. I bought this poncho at night at the World Rhythm Festival in Seattle because it had the swirl. It had swirls, and I've always loved swirls and the swirl of creation, whether it's the Fibonacci sequence or, you know, just mm -hmm. swirls. I love swirls. And so it was getting dark. They were throwing all the stuff back in the truck. They were loading up. The vendors were closing. And, and I kind of looked at it. And I'm like, how much, how much, how much? And I, and I bought it. And it wasn't even until the next day in the full light that I could see what else was on it. But the swirls, I've got to get it now. It's two swirls like this. Do you understand? Yeah. And yeah. then they shoot out like this. And wow. it repeats and it shoots out and it's the twins. Yeah. It's the balance, the yin and yang, the male and female. Very cool. Very cool. Right. Um, so in that Sandy Rock documentary, there is a time when they're showing the entire youth silent march and when i say youth i mean it was led by the youth the youth are in the front carrying the sacred chanupa the sacred pipe then the grandmothers and the elders 
And so all coming back. And anyway, you can see me there doing, doing the dance. She's, she's doing the dance. She's doing the, the work. The right? butterfly consciousness. Right, 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 right. Okay, so I'm going to, since we're talking about Standing Rock, let's back up and uh, I left on October 25th, so that's 1025. Isn't that funny? I just realized, so when I left for my journey to the Hopi was also October 20-something. It was Indigenous People's Day, 2016. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And then I left for Standing Rock. And again, I didn't think there was any way to go, but I was called, I was called, I was called. I had to go. I had to go. But my car needed a catalytic converter. Um, I had Kaya. I had the dog. Um, So there was no way I could go. But then Kaya got sick not long after I got back, and I had to put her down. And then all of a sudden, I was freed up that way. But still, I had the car. I couldn't, how could I go? And uh, the universe provided, so I would get there. And um, when we got there, it took a day and a half, and we drove straight through, which is not how I travel, because that's, that doesn't keep you in balance. When you, you, drive travel, through the... you travel four hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had the big dog, right? And so oh, yeah, to yeah. get her out, I had to unpack all that stuff, get yeah, her yeah. out, tie her up, put it all back, close the car, walk the dog, come yeah. back, you know? And so it was, it was a big ordeal. So... I mean, some, a couple times we did get back in the car and drive, but not normally. So to drive straight through with erratic sleep and not flat and not my normal practice, you know, I kind of got there a little, um, a little discombobulated. But when we got there, we were greeted by tribal police. And they said, thank you for exercising your right to speak up. Thank you for being here. Wow. And, they wel- and they welcomed us. And it was clear there's no drugs, no alcohol, no weapons when you go in the fence or you go into the gates and they ask you. And, and the police asked us when we were best, still back on the highway because there's so many people trying to get in. I mean, hundreds right. of people coming all day, every day. That place had thousands of people come through in that time. But as when you were there, Standing Rock, Standing Rock was 5D talk. Right. Right. Standing Rock was unity consciousness. And not everybody really understood that. But when you were there, everybody was a sister or a brother. Yeah. Everybody was an auntie or an uncle, a grandmother and a grandfather. The elders were respected and listened to and served. And we were there for the common purpose of protecting the water. Yeah. And many of us were, were aware that we were also fulfilling a prophecy. That's right. That was happening. And with what I, this is on the Kota Sioux territory, right? I remember what I told you about my name, Three Feathers. Yeah. It was the Lakota Sioux, Alex White Plume of the Lakota, who was speaking to the UN and said about the Three Feathers, right? Yeah. And so that's why I knew I had a, a big role to play or somewhat of a role to play. Yeah, your part. There, while I was there, right? But there was no need to steal. There was nothing for want. Everything was provided because there were so many donations and so many people all over the world sent not only money, but they sent, besides food, they sent all anything you would need, anything you would need, everything and everything, from wood to clothing to everything, everything. And so anything you needed, all you had to do was ask, and it was there. And so it was a very beautiful, beautiful place. And after I was only there for, I had only, I think we had only been there a couple of days. And we were camping and sharing a fire pit with a couple of photographers, a journalist and photographer from New York. Um, and then there was four in our party. There was two that we met up with there and we all had breakfast and made this fire one morning and had our breakfast. And then everybody went off the journalists and, uh, the, the tarpy builders. And, um, and I stayed behind to make sure the fire would go out. 
And so I'm sitting here and I'm just kind of like spreading the, the logs away and the ashes and, and right out of the ashes jumps a grasshopper and lands right in front of me. And I went, oh, you made it. That's the first thing I said, you made it. And I'm like, oh my God. And, and it pivoted a little and I could see it only had one leg. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh my God. And I reached down and I, you know, I kind of like just barely stroked it a little bit and I didn't release its spirit. What do you mean by that? Well, when an animal passes or a person, sometimes you can help guide the spirit, release the spirit. It's a way of honoring the spirit. Um, magical story with a, a robin that I came across, and that has significance, robin, that I came across that had just died. I mean, it was still pliable, you know, it was mm -hmm. almost still warm. Mm -hmm. And um, I released, and, you know, I called my friend, I just found a robin, what do I do? You know, another uh, shaman practitioner. And, and he said, you need to release its spirit. And, and so I did. Anyway, back to the grasshopper. The grasshopper came out, jumped out. And, and I, um, I put my hand down and, and she managed to get up onto my glove. And I was just sitting there like staring at this grasshopper going, oh my God, oh my God. And so I started going all around the camp trying to find an elder that could tell me the medicine the grasshopper brings. What does it mean? What does it mean? And I'd find somebody, I said, look at this grasshopper, it jumped out of the fire, literally jumped out of the ashes. It has one leg, the left leg. The left side of the body mm -hmm. signifies the divine feminine. Yeah. And she was standing strong. Yeah. Yeah. And I couldn't find anybody. So I went back to my, my uh, tent and I have this uh, abalone shell for smudging with sage, and I had it wrapped in a red cloth. And I took some grass, and I put it on there, and I got the grasshopper onto this cloth there, where she could kind of hide a little bit. And I was going to put it outside because I had to leave, and I was going to volunteer with the medical camp, the medical team in uh, Rosebud Camp. And so I put her in there, and immediately she did this. She cleaned off her eye, and she cleaned off the other one. And so she was starting to clean the ashes off of herself. Wow. Right? And so I put her right outside the tent, kind of covered a little bit with things. In case she needed to go out and find food, I figured she'd be gone. And I was gone for about five hours because I was filming the elders in the, um, in the tent, in the medical tent that needed what they needed donation wise yeah. and sending these videos out. And, um, by the time I got back, I noticed she was still there and just completely clean and shiny clean. And so I brought her inside and I was talking to her, telling her about my day and I was getting ready to go. because I was going to go to the sacred fire that night and, um, and ask about this medicine of the grasshopper. And so I did, I went, um, and they had, the drumming, always drumming, constant drumming, constant drumming, singing constantly, the whole time, almost all night. If there was a, uh, a ceremony, it would be all night. Right. That's what people say they miss the most from Standing Rock, it's the drumming. You can fall asleep to that. It's very healing. And so at the sacred fire, so again, I had to walk all the way down Rosebud Camp all the way across the bridge, crossing the river there. Um, the river, the water we were protecting. And then main camp, Ochete Shakoin, was right here. And the sacred fire was there. And so I went to the sacred fire, and they're drumming and playing. And I see this woman in a white coat with a big white hood and fur. And just white. It very stands out compared to everybody else. And, you know, we're, we're like all singing or listening or, you know. And I, and I turned to her and I started telling her about this grasshopper. And I said, I really wish I could find an elder that could tell me about grasshopper medicine. And she said, well, you should ask my dad. And I go, Who, who's your dad? She goes, he's the chief right over there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. 
And it's funny because before I went, before I packed up, because I pack up my backpack and I've got all, I've got water, I've got my teacup, I've got a bowl, I've got a dish, a spoon, a fork, because you're carrying your own to eat, drink, whatever. And I had packed up a cedar bundle that I had brought from Seattle. I brought a, a few cedar bundles with me to offer for smudging as gifts. And um, I had stuck that in my backpack, but I didn't really know why. And when I met him, she goes, go ask my father. And so I met him and I was asking him, um, and he's a Navajo chief, uh, Chief Gene Curley, beautiful man. And he's got, you know, all of this stuff. And I tell him about this grasshopper and I said, what does it mean? And he goes, well, what does it mean to you? And I said, well, it's clear. <laughs> I said, it's, uh, you know, it's the sacred feminine. It's the divine feminine standing strong, rising from the ashes and standing strong. Here to make huge leaps and bounds. And he, uh, when he did this, when he said, what does it mean to you? He put his hand out like this. Mm -hmm. And somebody walked by and just put some tobacco in his hand, just a pinch of tobacco. And he goes, what's this for? As if he didn't know, but he goes, what's that for? And I said, it's tobacco. It's to make a prayer, you know? And then uh, I told him that and he grabbed my hand or he grabbed me by the wrist and he goes, come with me. And he takes me to the sacred fire. And, and there's people sitting around and he goes, make room for, he goes, make way for me. And I said, excuse me, excuse me, grandfather needs to get through. And they part in another row. Excuse me, excuse me, grandfather needs to get through. And they would part. And he goes, come kneel with me. And so we kneel at the sacred fire. And he's, he said, I want you to do what I do. And out of his pocket, he pulls an arrowhead. I believe, I want to say it was black quartz, black smoky quartz or obsidian, probably obsidian. It was an arrowhead. Yeah. About that big. Yeah. Yeah. About that big. Yeah. And he pulls it out and he's doing this sacred, whatever, you know, and he's saying the words and then he gives it to me and he tells me how to hold it and how to move it. And he said, pray for yourself. And so I did, and I'm just like crying, right, as this is happening. And then we're done, and everybody around is just like, well, what's happening? And he ended up, actually, him and his family ended up giving me a ride back to the camp because I had injured my foot or something. And um, I later, I wasn't able to look up because I had no signal, and I still wasn't able to look up grasshopper medicine for a while. And so I did when I finally got back to uh, Bismarck. And I've got to say, I was at Standing Rock for seven weeks wow. and three showers. <laughs> well, that's normal for you, isn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not. I mean, even if you're traveling and you're on the road, you can shower at a community center, the I'm, RV I'm, park. I'm, right, I'm right. kidding. It's normal for me, not you. I'm <laughs> I, want to, I want to tell you something that's significant as I'm led to right now. Um, I did a show today with uh, Mayor Cromwell, who's very connected to to Mother Earth. Does you know has done a lot of stuff, written some books and such. It's, it was it was a very good show. And in uh, and I just realized this in October of 2016, which is the same time period, uh, she initiated with many other goddesses the 1000 goddesses gathering uh at um uh what is it called monument park where mlk gave his speech uh over there i forget that it, whatever it is so so, so um and and there and part of the reason she came on today was um was because and, and we're gonna we're gonna assist and support um, the the one that they didn't do one last year, but they're doing one this year, October twentieth, and uh, 
this is all coming from channel transmissions from Mother Goddess and uh, Mother Earth. Uh, but my point is, is that it was I a have very, some intel. Do you? But, there you go. Yeah, but go but, on. But my point is that it was a very prominent, uh, energetic, uh, as this one will be, um, impact of the Divine Mother Goddess, the Divine Feminine, which, I, which you know, listening to your story was very oh. prominent. It makes sense. It was very prominent at Standing Rock, especially during that month that you're speaking of. So I just wanted to share that with everybody because there's no coincidence. Right, 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 right. Um, Danny Rock was very powerful for me in many, many ways. But I think it was eye-opening for a lot of people in many, many ways to see how, how supremely the grandmothers are honored there. Yeah. And I like to say grandmother. And whenever I write it, I write it in capitals, grandmother. Yeah. Because truly, it's the grandmother. If you can imagine a family having dinner, the grandmother sees who needs more wine, who needs more food, the baby needs to be changed, the dog needs to be fed. She hears the conversation. She knows all the goings on. Yeah. And one thing that a lot of people don't know, many in this group may know, but the United States Constitution was largely based on the Iroquois That's Confederacy. Right. Yeah. And they left out one very, very, they left out some things, but they left out one very critical, critical clause, which was if there was a leader that was not fulfilling his duty and doing good by the people, the grandmother's council could remove that leader. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty huge, I yeah. think, right? Absolutely. Right. Um, so we're talking about October real quick. October, Intel. Uh, one of the wake-up thoughts I call them. The, did I talk about the wake-up thoughts the other day? Yeah. been getting those for a while. Yes, yes, I did because I received names sometimes. That's right. That's right, yeah. My twin's name and the number 111, right. which was hugely significant. So what's the, what what's, what'd you get for October's Intel? Um, I received wait until we enter 1016 dot 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 the whole world is going to shift yeah and i heard you talking you were asking uh i was watching one of your videos earlier today uh talking about september of course the conclusions and beginnings and how the shift is actually it's all it's happening right now yeah and um so it was wait until we enter 1016 and it's funny because i thought first that that was the date um, which it could be, but I have been seeing the numbers 1016. And so I've learned also that when you see these, their codes, their activations yeah. were at certain times and cycles. And I've been seeing 1016 for quite a while now. Um, so we might be in it. <laughs> the whole world is going to wake up. I think so. You know, and I think there's some significance too, to the other show we did earlier with Stephen Obey, uh, and he was talking about the lunar calendar and mm -hmm. as opposed to the Gregorian calendar. And he was talking about how, when the, the I one, would love to see that shift back. I yeah. Well, that's what he was talking back. about. He was talking about how the lunar calendar, which is matriarchal and is, and is still utilized to this day, uh, of course, covertly by the military, by the institutions, by the Vatican and such, they 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 put the the Gregorian patriarchal, you know, uh, you know, masculine energy out there with the Gregorian calendar, but they for themselves because they you know they uh, held in secret the esoteric knowledge, but it all goes back to to the indigenous and what you're talking about. Even like with the Iroquois, these were matriarchal societies, and he's basically talking about how we are integrating, how we can actually integrate. And utilize both, but we cannot, we cannot uh, exclude, you know, the goddess anymore. I think it's significant to you, ten sixteen, because this, this goddess gathering, which is also going to be this time a little bit different, where that was a local gathering. This is actually she's been instructed uh, through transmission uh, by the mother goddess to to create a grid of you know satellite uh, ceremonies while they conduct this one in Washington, D.C., which we, of course, know is a very dense area. 
Uh, and so, you know, even on the show, you know, one of our friends in Sydney said, I'll do it in Sydney. And so there's going to be a grid set up around the earth to, com to complete the activation of the mother goddess um, grid. Uh, and so that's 1020 and you're talking 1016. I mean, this thing's moving. It's moving. Yes. Yes. Well, and, and what the planet is going through all of this purging that we're doing, the macro reflects the micro micro yeah. reflects the macro, right? Yeah. So as we're doing this purging and that's been a huge part of my work and I work a lot with ancestral trauma and cellular trauma and I can explain how the ancestral trauma is carried in the cells and how it's possible to release that yeah, and absolutely. my experience with that. And so you do clear timelines, Back Absolutely. And forward. Absolutely. Right. Uh, Morgan walked me through uh, one. I told you on the 27th with that red blood moon, that's when I surrendered totally. I thought I was already surrendered. I didn't know I was still resisting. <laughs> and then the mother goddess came in and said, okay, boy. <laughs> so I was on my knees and, and I told that story. But uh, well, that's part right. of this. That's it, it, part of two things. First is um, the balance of the feminine. Yes. Yeah. Is, is needed to come. Um, I believe it was the Dalai Lama that said that the change will come from the Western woman. Yes, he did. Yeah. And, um, of course the balance between the masculine and the feminine, uh, yeah. and, and, and but that's the, what... in the twin journey, it seems like for, mo for most, from my experience and from what I have seen and researched that many times it's, it's the feminine, the divine feminine that wakes up first whether it's in a male body or a female body yeah. it's the feminine that seems to have a closer connection to um to the spirit realm or, no doubt you know no doubt, no doubt. And so no it's doubt. very hard also in this partnership and in this paradigm for you know for the men to let the women lead and that's and, what he talked about today and that's what was so fascinating he talked about like picture like a scale you know and how it's been you know, obviously uh, out of whack. And he, he said, it's not a matter of eradicating, you know, that masculine. It's just a matter of them stepping some of their weight off of it. And you're very right about this. And that's what I was getting at. It's I too love the things that you and Morgan both have been writing about the divine feminine, feminine and masculine. Well, and that's why I promoted it on my page. Yeah, so. Well, you know, and I'm telling you that's, and that's a really, and for me being a micro aspect of the macro, uh, when I hit my knees, I mean, this was a time when, you know, Morgan had been, we'd been together uh, here. We had the divine ceremony. She gets on a plane. She's headed to, uh, headed back home to Australia. And, and I go to Houston and on the plane, she received, you need to step back from him. He needs to go through something on his own and you can't do it for him. And again, this is a collective being played out in this, you know, energy of this couple. And that's what happened. So I gave it up. But what I wanted to tell you about the the ancestral thing was, and and I thought after all this time and all these dark nights of the soul, you know, I'm, I'm blowing through this stuff and I'm in this hotel room and I'm like, what the hell's going on? And I said, I felt something coming, right? So I called her up and I'm like, now, do you, something's coming. Do you want to hold space for me? Because she she's normally right there always holding space for me. Mm -hmm. you know? And I said, I don't know what's going to happen. It turns out I had come out of this lucid dream. And in this lucid dream, I went into this, there was a building that I didn't want to go into. So as soon as I went into, you know, I closed my eyes and, and I said, look, I'm going to go into the building. <laughs> it's scary, right? I go into the building and I see my grandfather taking a little boy down the hall. And I see my uncle in this other room and I see these, and it was all about sexual molestation and the suppression or the, the, the uh, you know, whatever of the, of the sexual energy. And, and it was ancestral and it was like, you know, whoa. I mean, it was like, it was like just epic, epic transformation, but it was not mine. And from that, of course, with the guidance of the feminine, you know, I was able to get through that. And, 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 and what you're saying is so true. This is where uh, we're at now. And this is where I'm excited because there's more and more and more men stepping up and saying, yeah, it is. It is time to lead. And the last thing I'll say is she told me this months ago. 
She said, it's going to look strange, even in our relationship, but even at the collective level, that she has to lead for a while, that she has to take, you know, she has to take the lead because you're right. They are more connected. They did wake up first and all the evidence is out there in the light worker circles. But I'm seeing real progress over the last two, three months with this energy and with your forecast and other forecasts and these things that are happening, such as this goddess event. Uh, I think we're we're getting somewhere. We're starting to make some serious uh, headway into this thing. Yeah, what's interesting that I've noticed, um, and it it happened from what I could see, it, it was happening quickly. The Me Too campaign blew up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And not long after that, there was a space for this, but not long after that, it was the talk of the wounded masculine, and the That's whole true. heart, the wholehearted masculine, and. Yeah. Yeah. mankind project things like that i mean yeah. those are just exploding and it's just it's beautiful to see and beautiful to witness and like we've been talking about the bigger picture with the divine feminine and the divine masculine coming together in balance represented through however many twins are here to do that and coming into union to do that um, we are faced with some particularly deep, deep, deep challenges mm -hmm. and woundings, and that's why they call us the descended masters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're the ground crew. And, you know, i got to tell you something, too, because this is, and, and, and I for months would tell her, I want to help the men, but I didn't know how. And I realized now, after I did that video on August 31st, before we, we hit, you know, where I was crying on the back porch and all that, which I was told to do, which I was moved to do, which I didn't want to do. But you and I both know, and everybody knows, you can't argue with the mother goddess. <laughs> you just do what you're supposed to do. But, but there's been two videos, two videos that I've done out of probably about 3,000, okay, whether they were live or recorded and, and uploaded. And, and I'm glad you brought this up because it, it was a real tipping point for me. So it was when that you, me, that, that uh, me too movement started. And I was in Connecticut and I was at a friend's house. There's snow on the ground outside, and I'm sitting on her couch, and all of a sudden, I have this, this memory, smell, uh, sensations of the body of molestation, right? And it was just like what happened here on the porch when that energy came through. I just said, I got to go do a video. So I went on a live, and I, just, and I didn't even have everything coming in. I was actually doing it on the, uh, on the live. So a lot like this one I did the other day, about 15,000 people jump into it, you know. But again, it was the energy, it was the expression of the masculine uh, on his knees, basically, and, and just saying, WTF, you know, what the hell's going on here? And that's where I see the effectiveness and the work of the feminine energy, which was the nurturing and the holding space, has started to become uh, something that, because it's all about trust. Love is trust. And, and trust is truth and you know what i mean and the masculine i see is starting to say okay i surrender you know i surrender uh because we cannot hold on to one iota <laughs> it's that 13 grandma uh grandmother grandmother v uh, veto that yeah. they can exercise at any hand be at any po point because without without her there is no creation you know, right. but there is no there is no cre uh, creator masculine to create anything because he's not even here without her. You know what I mean? So it's a, it's a right. it's a big pill for these masculine to swallow. But I do believe that we've made some progress because of the work. Well, I think done. it was really I think it was really amazing the way that you hit the nail on the head when um, in your post about the feminine and the masculine. Uh, I think it was the dance of the divine. Is that yeah. what it was called? where you said that the men had been given a false sense yeah. of superiority or a false higher position yeah. and sure. they've been duped that way too yeah. as to the truth yeah. of who they are and that yeah. that really helped so i've got to tell you as as an example of how difficult it is to come over overcome excuse me overcome something like that is for me, um, you know, my representation of the masculine, of course, first one was my father. Yeah. 
Yeah. And um, I was afraid of him. Yeah. He he didn't hurt me or I mean I got I got spanked and I got whipped with a belt type of deal and I was in, my brother and I did when we were in trouble and yeah. there's a whole kind of trauma I'm sure with that but so I feared the masculine and then my very first sexual experience I was raped when I was 13 by a 15 year old so it's been very hard for me to go all the way and figure out. And then when I got divorced, I just didn't want really have anything to do with men. And I tried really hard to be gay. But <laughs> <laughs> and okay. actually meeting, uh, meeting my divine masculine um, mm. is what made me look again. And oh it, actually made, it actually made me look at myself as a masculine it, this is before I knew he was my twin. It was just that all of a sudden, okay, I might consider dating a guy again, <laughs> you know? But um, all of a sudden, I would look at myself, you know, out of the shower without makeup on. I would flatten my chest and look at myself as a man. Yeah. And I would see myself as a man. Wow. And it's interesting because in all those past lives and... Um, that I saw in the mirror and I saw myself as male, female, male, female over and over, and, you know, and as a warrior, forgot to mention war paint mm -hmm. feathers, you know, and I knew that I had been a native warrior before. You know, there's also female warriors too. Yeah. You know that Stephen Obey today was talking about, uh, and I want to go back to what you said about being scared. Okay. Cause, it, cause something just came in. I'm probably gonna start crying. But uh, mm. Stephen, o Stephen Obey has been out there for 15 years serving the goddess. And, um, and he talked about what we're moving into, which is simple things such as when you're and, and I'm thinking right now about Morgan and I, you know, on a personal level, uh, just the energy. A man is direct. You know, the the phallus is pointed and direct you know the woman is the onk and, and so on and uh, the receptor mm -hmm. and he talked about how three things you know one which morgan introduced me to uh you know you guys carry this sacred wisdom and, and i'm like you know what am i doing i'm just following directions in terms of uh sacred sex you know putting your hands on her honoring her as the mother universe and the last place you ever go is the breast or the yoni or her, her butt you know what I mean it's all honoring all of it in in, in the portals and in, in the the in the information uh in the art and the akashic that it, that her body contains he talked about how when you have a conversation with uh a divine feminine you sit in a chair and she stands he talked about when you get into the mm -hmm. sacred sexual aspect the importance of her being on top that, that the whole conditioning of everything and the power and the force of the false masculine has done a number, like you said, duped us all. And that's what I wanted to say to you, because I realize now in my relationship with her, with my with my four daughters, with, you know, the, the feminine energies of my life, that there was a built in fear mechanism there. And so I have a loud voice and I've softened up quite a bit with with her guidance and the. Uh, uh, you know, working with me, but, but even if a man, like I, I would say, Hey, I'm not being loud. I'm not being threatening, but my voice would carry my passion would come through as a force. Mm -hmm. And, and there was a built in re a receptor antenna that they, they perceived to be uh, as, as something to be a, a frightened of. And I'm just realizing over the last 24 hours that, uh, you know, there's no fault there, but we have to, as men come off, and then not, and not run to this point and say, Hey, I didn't mean that, you know? So I didn't mean that. I don't know what your problem is. You know, we have to understand that this stuff goes back into like you were talking about the cellular and the ancestral and, uh, and to be consciously aware of that because uh, it, it is not about right and wrong. It is not about that. It's about being conscious of who we truly are and where we've been and having the honor and respect uh, and reverence for the situation. And in this moment, uh, this is, this is allowing space, 
uh, and the power to be handed off to her. And that's just the way I see it. Good. <laughs> that's fantastic. That's fantastic. It's a, it's a lot of overcoming and the sacred sexuality is a huge part of it, I believe. Um, it's a beautiful thing that's happening now. And so many twins are coming into union. And I wonder if anybody tried that om, 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 home. I'm going to try it. <laughs> I haven't forgot it. That's yeah. A, we can that do might, that before we get off. That might we, get your mantra here quicker or your, uh, your passport quicker. You know, I'm not even, I'm I'm not even, uh, I'm in such a state right this moment, this, this whole day with Steven and then with Mayor and then with other stuff happening. Well, well, yesterday, the day at 24 hours after we did our show, I was in communion and I stood there. I stood and I separated my human and I said, I need to have a talk. And so all the aspects pop up here. And I said, I need to talk to Mother God. <laughs> I'm going to the top. Mm-hmm. And, and I laid my truth out. You know, it's just me in the universe. And I laid my truth out. And I said, you know, here's the deal. And, uh, and I'm telling you, since that moment, it's just been one activation after another, you know. It's just been, and today I did three, I did two shows and I went down three times and each time it was her force pulling me down. You know, you got activated, lay down. I'm going to give you some more, get some rest. And I wake up and I'm like, whoa, what happened? I just went through a vortex, you know, it's real. She's back, you know, and, and this is what, um, this, this is what this network supports. It's her voice. And like he said today, what Steven said today, he said, he said, the man, and, and, you know, you're, you're, I don't believe I'm fully doing it but he said you are an example because when she speaks she has the talking stick you say nothing and it and it's taken me a long time to understand that you know but that's the truth she needs to speak and she needs to lead and the power needs to be handed over to her and 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 that may be a temporary thing until we get to the full integration of an uh, of a natural nature of our equilibrium you know but uh, it's it's an amazing thing. I just wish that that everybody would would understand. And I've struggled with this for a long time, trying to get the message out to men and for and to women even to understand that we came from two different places, and we've got to stop taking things personally because we all went through the hell, you know. And it's time to. Uh, it's time to recognize where we're at. It could and be, unite, yeah, 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 and help each other and lift each other up. That's yeah. why we're here, yeah. right? Thank you for letting me share that. Yeah, and I have something I want to share with you. Hang on a second. <clears throat> yeah, because you know, I thought you were okay. What you got there? Oh. These uh. <laughs> The string for the earbuds I keep tripping up on. Oh, I thought that was a... I keep knocking my thing over. Okay. Um, I was gifted this in Standing Rock, and I apologize to the person for forgetting who exactly it was that gave it to me. But can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Oh, it's a dollar. Uh Uh-huh. How did they make those little things in the middle? One, so two, it's or- origami. It's folded. Okay. Do you see there's 1111? 11. There's also eight little hearts. Yeah, I saw that. Each or one, two, three, four hearts and eight, eight little pieces. And on the back is also 1111. 11. Wow. Right? And so wow. this, is, this is a love donation. That's yeah. what this was. And so somebody gave me this in exchange for a, a, a healing or yeah. something <laughs> like that. That's very yeah. cool. Isn't that That's beautiful? Cool. And so that uh, looking at it as love donations as an, an energy until we don't lo- no longer need to use it, it helps. It helps for sure. Yeah. 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 <sighs> So one thing, 
when we're talking about activations, one thing I want to bring up, and I was telling the story last night or Thursday about how um, my hands started, right? Wait, Meditating wait. like... One second. They're saying we're having an echo? Or is it, it might just be the one person, but let me just... I don't hear an echo. Do you hear an echo? I don't hear an echo. Uh, no, it's not echoing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so the hands activating and then I would be in a meditation and I would come out of a meditation and my hands would be in a certain position. Yeah, that's right. You know, and then I told my yoga teacher and, and she said, let it happen. And so that eventually progressed into different movements. And this is one of the movements I was actually guided to teach children um, was to, you know, make a heart with your hands like this and open your heart. So, so teach them to open their heart and then to come back kind of like an infinity symbol. Can you see the infinity here, right? basically? And I was just, I was just doing this, and I noticed even now. You can try this, Todd. Try this, Todd. Basically, make a heart. Mm -hmm. Everybody, try, try this. Okay. Like this. Make a well, oh, both your like all this. your hands, okay. right? Make a heart, mm -hmm. and then you're gonna open your heart. Yeah. And you come back around. And you make another heart, kind of. Okay. Not too concentrated, and you just come back around. Oh, okay. Wait. Yeah. So drop your elbows down next to your body. <laughs> all right. And just hold Make your hands heart. right here. Yeah. And you just right. open your heart and clear. So open your heart and clear. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be so big. It could yeah. just be like this right in front of the heart center. Yeah. And basically it clears, it starts to clear the heart center. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah. That. Ah. And so like, uh, yeah. that's, that's one that. of the things that would I'm come. over here looking at an eleven eleven. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> There's an activation. <laughs> Oh so my God. another thing is, so my hands would start to move, right? And they would just do, and move all over the place. And it's in my aura. And I met a man under a bridge in Moab, Utah. Moab, <laughs> I've been there, man. With Moab, the, red, Utah. the Red Canyon, like the Red uh, Buttes up here. I spent yeah, the night yeah. there with Morgan, man. Mo yeah, Moab. fantastic. Yeah. Well, so I'm going for a walk. It's night. Of course, I've got the massive dog with me. So hot I, as hell, and, too, isn't it? Have no fear. Um, no, this was in January. This okay. was, uh, I spent a motel by myself. Nice. That was my birth. Uh oh. You went, you, your voice is gone. Your voice is gone. Yeah, I think you pulled it out. Can you, can you, uh, it went out and then, oh, she went out altogether. She's coming back. We still got another 40 minutes. We're going to have her back on a regular basis. We're going to support her doing her own show. I don't know if y'all caught it last week. She was talking about she was she was being moved to uh, to basically start broadcasting and develop her own thing. And I said, well, that's what we're going to do then. We'll support you to do that. Okay, so I got to tell you. We got for you. some reason, I didn't even have it open on my phone. A song just started playing from the very beginning. It just by itself. Wait a second. Uh, my friend Amanda, I don't know who it was, said today they put a post out. Somebody that's always right there said that this and this and this numbers, these certain numbers and this and that, but that the transmission she got was that these songs would be coming on and the words would have coding and meaning. So what song was it? <laughs> what song was just playing? Get Low. Get Low. It's called Get Low. Get Low. Get Low. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why it was playing. It's a really, it's a deep bass song. And before my speakers blew in my car, it was great. But, <laughs> um, but that's never happened before. And so, so she was saying that we're technological glitches. It's like Mercury's she, not in retrograde. What's I, up? I'll find it. No, no, it was. It wasn't glitches. It was. She gets. I think. It was oh, Amanda. messages. Messages. Yeah, it was it was a high level intel, and she was saying, and I can't remember because I read, you know, I go through this stuff quick. Yes, so, yes, I received because I will also receive a song yeah. out of nowhere. I'll hear lyrics, yeah. and I know it's you know coming from guidance or yeah. my twin, and um, that's what Morgan I, does. Morgan will be like, so she'll say, and then she'll call her daughter up and say, "What song is this?" 
and it, I've seen her do it many times, but, but Amanda, I think it was Amanda wrote today about something she just got in and it wasn't a big post. And she said, there's going to be songs coming on. And this was collective, you know, in our, in our personal experience that would have code and, and meaning. So <clears throat> I don't know. I'm just passing on the information, trying to connect the dots. Keep going. Well, one of the other uh, wake-up thoughts, as I call them, that I had was, in fact, do I have this close by? Are we talking R. Kelly, Ludacris, or T-Pain? Get Low? Yeah. Um, go Low. Is it Get Low or Go Low? Get Low. Oh, Get Low. I just want to, uh, now you got my interest, uh, piqued my interest. Get Low. Little John. I can't even think of any of the words right now. But but talking about songs speaking to you, um, mm -hmm. one of the wake up thoughts that I had was, and this was recent. This was like, oh, good here it is. This was July 29th. Is that the blood moon? July 27th was the blood oh, moon. Okay, so this is July 29th. Um, welcome to the agents, and it was ancients of every mankind. Mm. So it was two age, agents and ancients of every mankind. Welcome to the agents of every mankind. You got to have faith. That's George, uh, George Michael's song, You Got to Have Faith. That's mm -hmm. the song that played. You got to have faith. Mm. So the ancients of every mankind. So meaning the ancestors, right? Yeah. No, mm -hmm. the ancients are the ones before us. The ancients. The ancients, like as in like. <clears throat> they talk about the uh, ancient builder race, the ancients. Yeah. Um, I always received it as. In the same day, 729, the other thought was, wait till we enter 1016. The whole world is going to shift. So this is very was. recent. That was, uh, yeah, that was right after the blood moon eclipse, right? Right on. Yeah, many, many shifts. I'm excited. I'm I'm real excited, and we were going into nine nine. I mean, it's already nine nine down under, and in New Zealand, uh, that's that's going to be. I, I would think it is. I'm not one of those people like you, but you know, I would imagine it with the nine nine. It's uh, some kind of gateway. Yeah, I would think so. It's always a good thing. Well, nine nine is an end completion. Yeah. Um, another another. Uh, direction was to stay in a state of grace yeah yeah so i put uh i just made a youtube channel <laughs> you did you have, you, yeah except i'm not ready really with videos but you have to post two videos well i've got order, two for you in order for it to even show up <laughs> i got two for you i got this one and the other one i already i already uh, uploaded the other one on my youtube and i have a i have a right I have a copy for you. Uh, that's, that's awesome. Well, I just started it, and I've, it's called, uh, um, so you know I'm Three Feathers Twin Flame, so it's TFTF. So the yeah. channel is called TFTF Three Feathers Twin Flame. So uh -huh. I've got two videos up there, and one is of a beautiful horse called Viento, which means wood, uh, wind, excuse me. Yeah. And, and uh, it's, a, it's a video of when Kaya my beautiful wolf sister met Viento, this horse, and he's running alongside the car. It's just a beautiful, beautiful wow. video. You've got so to you already that. have two videos. Good. Yeah. Yeah. And the other one, this was my point. The other one I put up was, um, just a, a short little two minute, actually it's two minutes and 22 seconds. The video there you go. <laughs> go figure. That's what it turned out to be. And I tried to get my son to edit it for me, but, uh, he, couldn't get it done or it didn't work. But anyway, um, so it's about, it's a easy tip on combating anxiety and chaos. It's kind of like a little prescription and pretty much it's, um, it's to get your head on the ground because we never get our head on the ground yet. When something catastrophic happens, the first uh -oh. thing you do is you fall to the ground. Did I freeze? If you can hear me, go out and come back in. Ah. Yeah. So she's got a new, uh, YouTube. That's cool. And uh, here she comes. She'll come back in in a second. Appreciate you guys' patience. We haven't been having too many glitches. Starting to settle down a little bit. Lorraine Schroeder, 1016. Here she comes. 
Here she comes. You're back. Okay. Man, I'm feeling, uh, I'm feeling, uh, we need to move into some, I, I never do this on the show. You know, um, people, what? people that come on will want to, well, I'll ask them, do you want to do light language? Do you want to do a healing or a prayer? I, I, I never really, but I'm feeling like we're supposed to do some type of, <laughs> I'm just following the guidance here, but we're supposed to do some type of, uh, I don't know. I'm just feeling this indigenous, um, you know, soil from the soil up, you know, elemental up. I mean, gosh, you're uh, so on cue. My body is doing it. Yeah. You know, just, just where we, uh, and I got to tell you, you know, I told you we have all these coincidences. One of them includes my family lineage from Spain. You had mentioned Spain and uh, I never even told you that. Yes, but, and I have to tell you why why my heritage is considered big medicine. Yeah. I have to so Okay, so I'm going to tell you the story. So my mother is from Spain. What part? Madrid. Okay. So she came to the United States when she was 16 years old. And 9 years before, she had three brothers. I'm sorry, three sisters, two sisters. So there was three girls and a brother. Her father, after the Spanish Civil War, could not find work. He was a carpenter. <laughs> he, he came to the United States on a two-year visa. And he was a sheep herder in Northern California. And he would send money back to Spain for the family. And after... That visa was up. He ended up somehow going to Reno. He applied for citizenship, got a citizenship. He moved to Reno, Nevada, and worked as a maintenance man at Harris Casino. And he was in the United States for nine years, sending letters and gifts and money back home to support my grandmother and her three children. And during that time, one of the, the youngest sister died. Mm. Wait, was it the youngest or was it before my mother? See, this is like from an old photograph and I don't even have the photograph anymore. That's so, a great story. Yeah, so after nine years, this is funny. After nine years, they were able to get on a boat and come to Ellis Island, wow. the United States. And so they had to leave their home country. They all came. And there, this is a funny story. They were in the uh, train station in New York. And they went to a restaurant and nobody spoke English. None of them spoke English except for my mother did take English in school, but she learned things. They gave them a menu, right, on what to order. And she had learned things like meat and bread, mm -hmm. not toast and filet, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So she's mm -hmm. trying to read the menu and the whole family's waiting and she sees tortilla. And she goes, oh, tortilla, tortilla. That's what we want, four tortillas. <laughs> what what did they give her? Four four tortillas. And the waitress is like, Are you sure? And she's like, Yeah, yeah, that's what we want. She's like, okay. And in Spain, a tortilla, the original tortilla, is very much like a quiche. It's made with eggs and potato and garlic oh, and chorito and and it's filling, and um, they have it in many restaurants, many bars all over Spain. You go get tapas, which are tapas, at, at, yeah. uh, appetizers, right? And uh, yeah. tortilla is usually always one. And so it's like, yeah, four tortillas. And then here comes the waitress with four flour tortillas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? which I'm surprised they even had them there. <laughs> and she's like, oh, uh, this is not what we wanted. Well, this hmm. is 1965, and it was New York, and so there was Puerto Ricans, and there's, you know, yeah, yeah. there's, there's yeah. still a big uh, mix of people there in New York. Yeah. So, so, so that's the uh, immigration story there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but so I was raised with flamenco, which is the dance of Spain, which is the gypsy dance of Spain. And I'll tell you, uh, it's my family, whenever we had family parties, they were um, a lot of dancing oh, and singing and guitar playing. And, we lost um, you again. Go out and come back in. Yeah. It's energetic. It's energetic. Let's uh, stabilize it. Okay. I got to tell you. You there? Can you hear me? 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We got about we got about fifteen minutes because I've got to do something with Shakina Rose for tomorrow's show. I got to do some tests and stuff with the broadcast. Okay. Yeah, um, I, was, I wanted to go two hours, but well, that's almost well, that's almost that's two. almost two hours. Where did I freeze up at? Well, you're talking about the flamenco dance. The flamenco. Okay, so that that's a kind of a resistance dance. Uh, and very much from the, the caves, from the cave dwellers, the gypsies of Spain back in the day. And the first time I went to Spain, the only time I'd been to Spain was in 1993. And um, I went with my mother who hadn't been back since she was a teenager. And when I first saw Flamenco performed there in Spain, um, I cried because it was like in my blood. I could yeah. feel it. And when I saw a performance in a cave, it was as if it was a past life type of deal thing. It's in the blood. And um, anyway, so I was raised with this um, colonial patriarchal um, superior mindset. Yeah. And it wasn't until when I started to wake up, I saw online Columbus's journals, which are in the Smithsonian. And Columbus is very revered in Spain. And when I went to Spain and I was in Barcelona and I met my great aunts there, and we're walking along the, the, uh, the, the, the port there, which is a huge statue, you know, way, 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 way up. And I said, who's that? And my aunt said, Colón, Colón, it's Colón. And I turned to my mom, who's Colon? And she said, Columbus, idiot. Yeah. <laughs> no. I thought it meant ass. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, that's Colon. That, no. that culo. <laughs> we don't say that. I keep that. losing that's you. Why. They say it's me. Let me see if I can fix it. Okay, so I'll keep talking. So you're you're I, good. They're okay. saying that uh, you're so, going, and uh, I'm just not able. You're freezing up for me. So stay right so there. I saw keep going. Christopher Columbus's journals where he had talked about the price per head on the native people and this just stopped me in my tracks i don't know if you got that todd i heard you say about the native people what did you say so i was saw online Christoph pictures yeah, yeah. of Christopher yeah. Columbus's journal where he was talking about how much per head for the native yeah. people. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that, that's that old, that, that this, was that, yeah, yeah, that. So, but, so this yeah. woke me up. This just, this, yeah. this ruined my world because I, oh, well, I, I see just, what you're saying. I just, yeah. I had no idea. And then I started learning the truth about what really happened to the native yeah. Americans. And yeah. I learned about, the residential schools and you know the last residential school didn't close until the 50s or the 70s in yeah. Canada and um, and the same in uh, uh, Australia you know and I, happened with so now my father's side of the family uh, my father's from uh, Texas and I always thought that that side of my family was Mexican where's he from Texas uh, Floresville Floresville Man, yeah. that's down in my neck of the woods, Corpus Christi. Yeah, Cruci. Floresville. Oh, yeah. Floresville's a little further south. Yeah, yeah. south side of San Antonio, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah you're right. It's I need to take a trip there. Yeah. But anyway, so. I can guide you there. But uh, So he wasn't Mexican? He was from Texas, and my cousin did some research, and it uh, turns out that the family had been there since before it was Texas and before it was Mexico. So, so it was the indigenous, the indigenous people of that land. Yeah. Well, your, so, your, your background's very similar to mine. So wait now. Yeah. Spanish and indigenous. Right. The conqueror and the conquered. Yeah. So the person, uh, I was speaking to the eldest granddaughter of a chief. And I'm, oh, I'm so sorry, I cannot remember the name of the tribe in Canada. And as the eldest granddaughter... Her name is Polonique's Love. She's an amazing teacher. She's been uh, awake since she was a teenager and guiding the youth and has done just amazing things. And she teaches, and I plan to bring her to Seattle 
um, to teach a class on how to be in right relations with the indigenous. And I had met her when I was studying, or I went to sit with Chief Phil Lane Jr. in Monopalaka. I also met Polonique's love. And before I was going on my journey to the Hopi, I had called her because I wanted to be in right relations with the indigenous. And I wanted to acknowledge the protocol and do things correctly. And so I had a two hour conversation with her. And when we got into my heritage and I told her who I was, and then I should also tell on my, um, all this time while I'm waking up, I would just have like a, a crystal, a selenite crystal or my medicine bag with a couple of rocks. And I would set out a red cloth and, and just put these on the ground in whichever way they spoke to me. And, you know, by a river or something. And, and I, I pick up this, my rattle. <laughs> there it is. I pick up my rattle, this little rattle. And I don't know how, again, I'm in like this trance and I just start moving it in a certain way and turning in a certain way you know, and I'm calling in all the directions. And so these memories and these things kept coming and coming and coming and coming. And then I find out my, some stories from my father. He tells me about my grandmother that, I'm going to watch the time here. He remembers as a little boy. He was the youngest of eight, I believe. <clears throat> and he remembers, uh, Somebody would come to the house to see mama and he would, uh, she'd say, go out to the tree, go out, go out and play by the tree. And so he'd go out and play by the tree and they would go inside for a little while. And then he said, after a while, he said, this, this old lady would come out and get him. And she'd say, come on, hijo, let's go inside and get some ice cream. And he said, and at first I didn't know who this woman was, and, but she said the magic words, ice cream. And so I went with her and we went inside. And as I'm eating my ice cream, you know, her hair was white and she was older. And she, as he's eating, she became herself again, his mother. And so she was a healer and she was taking on, on things. And so he told me some stories like this and, and then... So when I told uh, Polonique's my heritage, she told me that her people, the grandchildren of those in the residential schools, are seeking healing from those that put them there. Yeah, exactly. Right. And sure. so this, uh, the whole journey was very, it was very, very divinely blessed. But, yeah. uh, anyway, I wanted to share that. That's crazy. This point, these, uh, and then I'm looking at you in the light and you look just like my aunt. She <laughs> looks just like my brother who looks just like his daughter. It's, get, it's getting dark here. <laughs> <laughs> same, same face, same energy. Um, wow. My hands are opening up. Let's so uh, let's freestyle. Oh yeah, I feel something happening. So I just want to. Uh, I feel like something. Um, I don't normally do this. If I do it, I do it by myself. So I just feel something very ancestral. Um, I feel the presence of many elders, um, the grandmothers. There's a circle of the grandmothers around the fire. Um, I just want to honor them and honor you as, as you represent them and, and many, many uh, divine goddesses that are carrying sacred wisdom mm. from all, uh, all over the universe, all the planets. But most important in this moment is the indigenous um, that came from the soul to the soul through all the dimensions and they're supporting you 
the divine feminine is here supporting the divine masculine. Can, yeah. you, can you see my hands at all? Yeah. Yes, yeah? I see. Yeah. So the left hand is holding very much the heavy, heavy right hand. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And the left hand is standing, it's holding firm. Yeah. Holding and carrying and supporting the masculine. Yeah, that's the truth. And holding space for you to do your healing because it's true. Mm -hmm. It's you're true. Both, we're, you're healing and we're healing and rising as we're healing. Yeah. Or we're going to rise together, yeah. So the ancestors. Um. There's a lot of pain in the heart, the higher heart here. Yeah. There's a lot of blocks still. This is going to help, this clearing, this opening. This is actually clearing the heart space. There's some deep wounding. And actually, my twin and I share a wound. And when we came together in January, we were sitting across from each other, and I was just feeling, because my hands will go to what needs attention yeah. on him and I felt this part on his right chest and immediately my other hand was here and it was like it was literally you know a, a mirror wound a wound that hurt us both in the soul yeah. and they say you even look like each other and it's funny because like this eyebrow goes up and his other his right eyebrow goes up we're like mm. perfect mirror but mm. anyhow um mm. The ancestors. Can I explain? Can I explain how ancestral karma, trauma, excuse me, ancestral trauma is stored in the cells? Mm -hmm. I think we need some understanding around that because people are often saying, "Just get over it, let it go. It wasn't yours. It's not your story." But here's how we carry it, and here's how I know. So one day I was working with the, with the ancestors and specifically my grandmothers. And I had a necklace from my one grandmother and a brooch from another grandmother. And um, like I said, my hands go to what needs to be healed. And I was in my right hip area, which there's a lot of, Trauma happens in the emotional body and the mental body. And if it's not dealt with, then it comes into the physical body. It will manifest there. Oh, gosh, I want to do a whole thing on that in the we'll anatomy of the spirit. I know. I know. <laughs> we'll do it next time. So I'm working on I my hip, and my hand is in there, and it's digging around. And I suddenly, I feel my, uh, my grandmother, my matern maternal grandmother, and I feel sexual assault. And I'm able, I had written it down, but I, I was able to release that. I felt yeah. it and I was able to release that and clear it. Yeah. And as soon as I did that, my hands came up to my throat like this. Yeah. And I felt my paternal grandmother, the healer, being silenced and told to never speak of these things again. And I felt a boot on her back. Mm. and mm. so again I was able to clear that now how did I find that in my body so I'm going to give an example if you're going for a walk and you see you see a, a, a hose Gosh, sorry I just told it wrong <laughs> delete hose. that part <laughs> and the hose you're going, you're going a for a walk and you see a snake you see a snake and you're like <gasps> you see a snake right mm -hmm. all of a sudden your body has gone through all of these chemical reactions every cell has gone through a chemical reaction as a response to the fear of that snake and then yeah. you realize it was just a hose or a rope and it's yeah. nothing to be scared of yeah. but your body has still undergone that 
response. Yeah. Okay. So just how we have a human aura, each cell has an aura. So yeah. this is cellular memory. That's how it's carried in the cells. This is where instinct comes from. So there's ways to, to um, get that uh, released from the body through touch, through sound, through light, through prayer. Um, so it doesn't have to be there, but it is carried. It does affect us. Mm -hmm. And so like this around the throat, I mean, I've had a, a huge time speaking my truth. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's what a lot of the divine feminines come going through. And so now yeah. is the time and I'm seeing 44. Now is the time that we are speaking our truth. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, we are. You are. Well, yeah. Ah, uh, they feel good that that was said. Yeah, you know, and I'm reminded. Do you feel that? Oh, absolutely. I was reminded uh, that when my journey started, it was built up to the point that I threw down. Um, it was six grandmothers that I, at the time, prayed to. Six grandmothers that I prayed to every single day. There were six grandmothers that were in my life and grandmothers of either myself or my children. Mm. You know, and uh, all right, this has been, uh, this is the way it rolls, man. I love this where we just let it roll. I want to, I've got to show you this since we're talking about grandmothers. <clears throat> this is a, a blanket I brought back from my father's things. Let's see if mm -hmm. you guys can see it. Can you yeah. see that? Yeah, the little... Uh, it's the three grandmothers. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. And so that's here in front of my, uh, in front of my altar. <laughs> well, ah, all I'm, right. gonna, uh, I'm going to... Um, I'm doing one show with Shakina Rose tomorrow, and we're going to do a 9-9 ceremony tomorrow with Zavetta, Teresa LaPre Rivera, and Michael Van Patten. And then I'm probably going to hit the road Monday, Monday or uh, Tuesday morning, and and I'm going to go find a place for about ten days. I will be broadcasting, but I'm mostly going to be putting the the channel together, or the, uh, the, the, uh, the channel, the first channel, channel one, on the mm -hmm. Soldier Network, with footage. Some of it will be yours, um, and uh, but some beers, some beers. No, I said some of it will be. It's that Texas accent, that lazy Texas accent. But, uh, no, I said some of it will be yours. Well, there might be some beer involved. Probably not. Be probably yours. actually, it probably won't be because I probably won't be doing too many radio shows. Uh, but uh, so yeah, maybe uh, uh, I'll hit you up um, during the weekend. We'll try to get another one in by next weekend. And okay. Keep this going because it's a, it's a, it's a, there's definitely a uh, a kindred. Uh, synergetic I wanted to say connection but it's more like a circle to me like a circle of life that uh, we're connecting some dots here yes well we're bridging we're bridging yeah. right and we're we're connecting like I said circle connectors yeah um, uh, I, can I sing you out with a song yeah send me out with a song so this is a song that I just I hear I hear and sometimes I have to sing it Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, hey. Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, hey. Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, hey. Hey ya, hey ya. Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, hey. Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, hey. Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, hey. Hey ya, hey ya. Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, hey. Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, hey. Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, hey. Hey, 
Thank you. Thank you. It feels like a call to me. It feels like I was hearing it from the grandmothers. That it was I, like, like they I, were uh, calling me. I don't doubt that a bit. Laurel Gill says, oh my God, I was singing that waiting for the show to start. So we're connecting the dots. It's an honor to serve you. I should. I, I think. I. I think. I think. Maybe I should start the song. Start the thing like that. <laughs> yeah. Call us all together. Yeah. It's a. It's an honor to serve you, and Thank everyone you. here. And it's an honor to serve with all of you. And I know that uh, we're just going to continue to uh, to uh, expand this this pure love vibration because that's what it is. So I'll, I'll reach out to you. Thank you, everybody, for uh, coming in. And uh, we'll thank be on, you. Yeah, we'll be on tomorrow one o'clock. Oh, so so if you guys can, if you guys subscribe to my channel, um, so it's TF TF Three Feathers put, Twin put it Flame on, the, put it on in YouTube. The, yeah, I'll put, put it, it in the comments. Yeah, just but go it, and, yeah. yeah, so I do things backwards. Grasshopper medicine is about um, taking leaps forward and not knowing where you're going to land, and so that's uh, inspirational for the divine feminine is to just go. Just take that leap. Just jump. Just speak your truth. Do what it do what it is you need to do, and nine times out of ten, chances are or, it's going to be very or, favorable. Or jump on a plane, and yeah. Give up everything you have and jump on a plane and fly from Australia to America for some crazy guy. <laughs> <laughs> is Which, she coming? Can she come back? Oh yeah, but I mean, I'm talking about the the last two times. No, I'm just saying it because that's that's what she did, you know. And, and that's yeah. what the feminine's doing. The feminine is taking those leaps. So, it's all right. for all uh, of us. All of yeah, us. Yeah, it is. Safe. Uh, yeah, so, all right, Todd. Thank yeah, you yeah. very hey, much. Hey, send me the link to my messenger so I can put it uh, on the network and I can tell people to get to your uh, to your YouTube. And then and then I'll subscribe to it and it'll show up on my page. Yeah, if I get a, subscribers, that'll encourage yeah. me to make, make more videos. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll give you the two... Uh, uh, files for the last show in this show and every time we do a show i'll give you the file it'll be editable and you can either put it on like it is or you can do what you want with it all right okay that sounds great you're gonna send that to me how messenger yeah yeah i'll just send you the google drive link i've already got one done i have to upload this one and give you the other one but uh, i'll have it to you within 24 hours no okay problem. all right sounds great care. i'll see you enjoy thank it you again. thank you many blessings to everyone thank you todd much yes. love thank you